So once again, here we are, standing outside some filthy door. Within the filthy door, there most certainly lies some filthy tinkers. Today, my dear viewers, we behold Blockfar Kiev, a small, secluded area just to the east of the Legion raid camp and north of a location for one of my previous videos, Matthew's Animal Husbandry. Within lies a strange dumping ground, an odd workshop, a dead body, and many giant dirty rodents who want nothing more than to gnaw you a new one. Let's take a gander. As soon as you enter, if you have the wild wasteland perk, shit gets interesting. If you don't, turn around and leave. There bees nothing for you here, you miserable bastard. The first thing you'll see is the early warning system for there bees radiation here. Glowing shrooms. The second thing is a torch. So the place is irradiated and someone is inside. This is gonna be good. As you get closer, you see minecarts filled with barrels of waste and cans of food littering the ground. So someone is either transporting waste out of here or carrying it in. And based on the torch, they must still be around. You know, hopefully. If you take the tunnel to the right, you will eventually arrive into a chamber filled with waste, lamps and some sunset sarsbrilla. Based on the burning cans, torches and huge pile of waste, it's obvious at this point that someone is collecting all this waste here. Also, based on the large volume of discarded food containers, they must have been here for quite some time. There's some blood as well, suggesting that they were somehow wounded. Meaning they might not be the only thing that prowls within this dirty crevice of a cave. But I'm sure that whatever the other thing is, it will have no quarrel with us. Right? Hmm. Going deeper into the cave and down this really, really pleasant and not creepy in any way, shape or form tunnel, we come into a large opening and encounter the creatures that dwell within the cave. Rodents of unusual size, or R-O-U-S. Essentially, they're just giant unique rats, though this cave is absolutely swarming with them. Also, uh, mind you don't alert the ones below, as they can go up into this um, overlook area which I learned to my dismay. So the actual cave is very large, lit with many burning cans and torches, and with an even larger concentration of waste than the previous chamber had. The torches and can fires are most likely used in place of conventional lighting, either because they didn't have any handy, or, more likely, because the individual in question has been down here for a long time. So how do we think all this waste got here? My best guesstimate is that it was moved here by the individual who set up shop in this cave. They wheeled it down here and deposited it. As a result, the rats were either mutated by it or attracted to it. But what happened to them? Where are they? They're right here. And they dare as fuck. Since they've died in the middle of an encirclement of waste, they must have done so while making a deposit. Then, when they went to dump it, they surprisingly enough got mauled by the vicious giant rats. They at least brought a gun with them, so they weren't 100% retarded, but they were definitely batting at least the high 60s. There's also the possibility they didn't die here, which, based on what we will find later, may have in fact been the case. Back up on the ledge, we can actually get access to what I assume was the lab slash lair to the individual who shall henceforth be known as the Root. Inside, we find more rats, and it looks like they broke through the weird fence that was installed here, meaning this individual was attacked inside. Along the wall is a massive array of computers and adorning the desk is some metal gear and some cat's eye which makes sense given the low light visibility. They had a radiation suit as well, most likely for transporting the waste. The leg we find is evidence we need that they were attacked and torn apart in here, and then dragged down by the rats. Some medical gear can be found here as well as a chemistry set. Behind all this is what looks like to be an array of large mixing vats, though what they contain is anyone's guess. So the question now is, the fuck was going on here? Well, we know the rodent was transporting waste down here and storing it for some reason. They have large amounts of food, which suggests they have been here for a very long time. The amount of waste that's accumulated would also support this assumption, as finding it all and bringing it back would take some time. There's also a lot of very advanced equipment here as well, and Lord Moses knows how they even got it in here, but it requires some feat to do so, and the equipment also only fits the purpose of scientific research. So we have a created habitat for giant mutant rats, and an individual who has a fuck ton of advanced scientific equipment available to them. So my only conclusion is that they came here to do research. They wanted to see how the giant rats bred, grew and changed over time. 
so they made their own petri dish, so to speak, using waste and most likely introduced the rats over time, as they have been here for a long time if the amount of food is anything to go on. How they actually got the samples they needed for the rats is answered as well. They shot and killed them, like a bunch of cunts. Below one of the desks in the lab is the unique varmint rifle called the Rat Slayer, and the name tells us everything that we needed to know. The rodent used the gun and shot and killed the rats from the ledge like a camping shitlord. Then, the rodent brought the corpses back and analysed and experimented on them. The vats may have been full of samples the computers were trying to analyse, but we may never know. One last note. They would have only needed one sample every few days to weeks, given that the rat population is still quite dense in the cave and we believe they only died shortly before we arrived. If we look at the rat slayer, we can actually see how many of them they killed. Etched in the stock are 69 scratches that most likely represent the amount of kills they have racked up. Now, if we say they needed at least one rat every week, this means that they have been here for more than a year. Oddly enough, beside the marks is a mole rat skull, not a normal rat. Perhaps the research was concerned with both. In the end, however, the rodent's work was all for nothing, and they got jumped and mauled by the very rats which they had created. I hope you liked this episode about dedicated and ultimately useless science and the fat rats that it created. If you did, why not leave a like? I love reading comments, so get them in there. Any suggestions for future content or videos you would like me to do are greatly appreciated and welcome. If you want to help me grow, share this video on as many social media sites as you can, especially Reddit. Tell everyone. If you want to contact me regarding business, send me a private message either here or on Twitter and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I hope to see you in my next episode. And until then, goodbye.